everyone, it's Rofal, and today we're gonna talk about iPower Red. We're going to kill an iPhone 6. We're gonna check out how many volts it takes to kill an iPhone board. Then we're going to repair it. And also a sneak peek of one of the functions of the tool that I'm working on. Let's get started. So iPower Pro has been for a while. Basically, uh, you pl plug it to your power supply. You set it to between 3.8 and 4.2 volts. And then you have a bunch of uh, wires that you have to solder these tips to on. Let's put in the camera. This is a 6 plus. You have a battery terminal and you have the charging dock connector. And what it allows you to do is plug it to the battery terminal. What is this? This is a 6. Allows you to plug it to battery terminal. Oh, this one is fucked. Okay. So here's a 6 plus, I'm gonna plug it here, plug it here, you plug it to the power supply, you press one of the buttons to apply power to the battery terminal and then you press the other button to turn on the device. And the way this works is um, when you press the momentary switch, it applies power to one of these pins, I'm not sure which one is it on this one, I think the bottom, but uh, once you apply 5 volts to that pin, it will uh, allow the phone to boot up because it thinks there's a charger plugged in. So that's pretty cool. But um, this thing wasn't working too good for me. Um, and I also saw some uh, comments on the Facebook groups like the repair shopper, shop talker. There are groups like uh, cell phone repair shop talk and uh, introduction to micro soldering. They're pretty good uh, you know, places to get some information when the new tools coming out, solutions and all that. And I had saw a few people like complaining about this. So I decided to open it up because mine was acting up. Whenever I'll be plugging it in, it will just show a uh, full short. So I've opened it up and right off the bat, you can see this is what I saw here. And this is pretty terrible. So like this is one of the cheapest cables you can get. This hard, hard cover uh, wire with a thick, uh, thick braid. And then, you know, these two isolations are completely ripped off and they were shorting together. That's why I had issues. So, but the rest of it works is you have this positive going to this resistor. Here's your on off to uh, allow power to go through. It goes through a bunch of resistors here to your uh, main power lines. And you have some decoupling capacitors to like clean the signal out. And then from uh, the moment from on off switch, the power goes to this momentary switch where you have your uh, resistor connecting to the LED. Here is a coil uh, capacitor that's technically in the wrong spot. Here is a uh, five volt step up IC. Then you have your capacitor, there's a diode here, zero ohm resistor going to, um, to the connectors. So pretty much that's it. It's a pretty simple device, but as you can see, there's no voltage regulator on this um, input power input line that goes to the battery terminal. That's why, like mine, I got mine from micro soldering supply and they applied a sticker that, you know, input 3.7 to 4.2 volts because that's the voltage of the battery. So if you go over, um, you're gonna, there's nothing to protect the phone. It's just, you're gonna shoot whatever, you apply 10 volts, 10 volts goes in. So uh, this spiked my interest to see like what kind of voltage would it take to kill the board. So I'm guessing it's going to be around 5 volts because everything here on USB is you know 5 volts USB tolerant. So it should be 5 volts and then there's a tolerance of quarter volt. So it should be 5.25 and over that it should just kill the phone. So let's make a test and see how far can we go. So I have this iPhone 6 board here that uh, it's iCloud locked and I don't care if we damage it. And let's just check out how many volts it will take to kill it. And since my DC power supply is in front of the camera and I don't feel like moving it, we're going to use one of my uh, tools I made for reading um, voltages and amp current draw. The way it works, you plug it in here. It applies power, it starts measuring. So here's the microcontroller. And then over here, there's a current sensor and you can apply voltage via this headphone jack. So in and out works here. Right now, I just kind of rigged it the way it is. Um, and also here, 
there is a um, Molex connector and on this end I have a iPhone 6 battery connector so I'm going to apply ground power that's going to go to the phone and over here we're going to connect uh, the power supply and since I'm missing one more ground from power supply I'm going to plug it to this uh, debugger pin which is also ground and then the way it's going to work I'm going to plug power supply over here I know this looks messy but this is just for the purpose of this video there's something nicer coming along and that's my setup and then this is going to plug to the phone like so and we should get power voila now this cable is a little bit uh, hard so the battery connector just pops out so what I'm gonna do is screw in the battery cover and I put some tape so it doesn't short out the remember these my screen jig this is gonna allow me to hold the connect the screen up let's plug this puppy in it won't be perfect but it should work that way there's some pressure so the um, battery connector won't pop out and now we can turn this on so you're probably wondering how we're going to see what kind of voltage we are applying to this by moving the power supply and we're going to do this so here's my app I'm gonna to connect to the part click start and now we have voltage so if I raise my voltage on the power supply it will go up whoa we already went pretty high <laughs> this power supply sucks so you can see we already hit like 4.8 but let's see if it's gonna turn on it did all right so we are 3.92 and I have my uh, wires in the wrong way it might be buggy so I'm hoping it's gonna work kind of feels like you're on, on the keynote and we're looking good so I'll let it boot. It's uh, it was the phone was restored, so it's on an activation screen asking for iCloud. So whatever. All right. So here's our welcome screen. So the phone works here. So I'm gonna leave it here. And the app crashed. Shit. All right. So I just resume the readings. You can see we're, we are. You can see we are already at 4.46. So we're really pretty high. So the phone is working. So let's just start slowly cranking up the voltage and see how it goes. I'm pretty sure we should be fine until like five volts. Four point five, six, seven, five, eleven. All right. This DC power supply has a knob that and takes a while to like update the screen. So I'm not sure what's going on, but we are at five volts right now and the phone is still working fine. Um, so let's see how far we can go. Let's crank it up, baby. Five point one, two eight, two nine. So technically we're on the edge of the USB specification technically over and let's keep going so I'm still working fine trying to crank it up as slow as possible so we can catch it at one point the phone will die so let's keep going alright we're definitely well over the Voltage, we're at 5.7. Let's hit it to 6. 570.85. All right. So 
because at about 585 the phone restarted. So actually I'm just going to keep it at about 5 volts, see if it's going to boot up. It's running on f almost 5 volts. So let's get in and let's start cranking up the voltage again and see when it's going to shut off. So that bouncing there, we're at 6.2 volts. I'm actually surprised at this point. I'm wondering, because right now the power goes to Tigris and I'm not really sure how much power Tigris can take. And we just turned off again. Let's see if we can boot up. So we're booting up at 5.9 volts, which is pretty cool. I wonder if we can go to like 7 volts, which would be like a 2 cell battery. Oh, and my app just switched. Let me fix that. Now you can see the difference that right now it's constantly taking 1 amp. So there's something definitely going on. It's also uh, weird that uh, the power supply is set to 6.5 amp uh, volts and we are at 6 volts on the battery terminal. So there's definitely, st oh okay, we just shorted out. Power supply just completely died. And you can see the drop on the graph. So I think at this point we toast it. So let me back up to like regular voltage and actually you can even see at 3.8 volts it's taking 2 amps so something definitely got cooked. See what's gonna show up. I'm gonna plug the power supply. Hmm, that's interesting. That's the baseband power. I don't know why the light keeps reflecting in this weird way. I contacted Amscop and I'm thinking I'm gonna have to send this out because the quality kind of sucks. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. And I use different cameras. This is a Sony DSLR. But uh, let's just remove this chip. Before I actually do that, I just want to make sure if it's not just one of these caps by chance. Hmm. Okay, it's a bunch of them, so it might be the whole thing. Okay, well let's remove the chip then. It doesn't have to be pretty, just want to make sure nothing is connected together. Let's see if we still have a short. To the ground on VCC, although on the battery it was fine. All right, and now we're clean. There's no more two beeps on the VCC main power line. So let's try to fire it up. So I am at 3.6 volts. Let's bring it back to uh, let's do about 3.8 for the regular stuff. Okay. And let's bring this back to the camera. Let's try to turn this on. 
and we got the Apple logo again. Let's see if it's going to boot without that baseband power management chip. And we are back in business. So the touch works. Yeah, it works okay. So so here's what happened. We have a searching bar because there's no baseband power management, but the phone did boot. We did apply 6. what? I can't remember now how many volts. I'll put it over here. This is all for this video. I'm actually surprised this phone took that many uh, volts and uh, it was a quick repair. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I'll catch you later in the next video.